Hey guys, um, you might actually know that I released a video just yesterday when I talked a little bit about the future of RTS games, especially the traditional RTS that was kind of represented in the video by StarCraft compared to Warcraft 3 as being a hero-based RTS game and then also took a couple of parallels to mobile games. And I feel that the discussion actually went a little bit awry. There was a really good discussion going on on Reddit and also in the YouTube comments where people discussed the points that I made. And a lot of them agreed with them, a lot of them disagreed and had other opinions. But I think that in a retro perspective, a couple of the points that were made should have been laid out a little bit more clearly. And also, big parts of the discussion kind of went into uh, the question whether the MOBA game or the RTS genre is better for esports and is like more attractive and that was not really what I was getting at so I feel that I should have probably talked a little bit different about it prioritized a few points a bit differently and so in this video I just wanna once again like in a nutshell just present the argument and uh, try to actually present it a little bit more um, uh, more neat and also I wanna just talk a little bit about the uh, comments that I got because there were a couple of things that popped up every now and then again so basically the argument that I was trying to make is like um, very simple. It's uh, just that we have, the one thing that we need to achieve in uh, the RTS community or in esports in general is we need to create viewers. If we have a lot of viewers, then sponsors will take an interest in sponsoring like tournaments, they will be interested in sponsoring players. And the more money is in the scene, the bigger the scene gets, the more professional it gets, and uh, the easier it is for players to make that step from being a casual player to being a professional player that really dedicates all of his time and effort into the game. Whereas, of course, the skill level will rise and then we will get better games and better matches just as the viewer outside. So uh, the viewer perspective is really the one that I want to talk about here. And the one argument I was making is that if you have a game like Warcraft 3, you had a key element in the game, the hero. The hero where all the attention could be focused upon. And these hero elements created highlights within the game. You can compare it a little bit to traditional sport with soccer if you think about like a goal. Scoring a goal is always one of the main objectives in the game. Of course, you want to win and you need a good defense. But if you watch any highlight video, you will always see just a lot of the goals that are being shot or if a goal was just denied by the opponent. If you have something like this, you can really create a lot of excitement around it. And that is something that you can also like then work with as a caster. You can really see it in a crowd when they watch a game that they get excited about, like a goal that's being kicked. And the same is true for something uh, with the uh, heroes, when you have an RTS game that is based on uh, that hero element. Because the, the death of a hero is always a big, big event. So you can really uh, just like get crazy about it and you have all this excitement, all that passion coming across. In a game like StarCraft, this is much more difficult because you lack these elements. So there's not really this one particular point in the game where everyone just goes wild because like, oh my god, that was so good. It's just in general much easier to show very, very good micro. And that is what hero-based games essentially are. They are very micro-heavy games. It's easier to show that than compared to very exciting and good macro. Macro isn't really all that exciting if you think about it. It's like absolutely on a high skill level and it's very difficult to approach, especially when you see in StarCraft 2 a player drop on several occasions, move his main army at the same time, engage into a battle and uh, macro up at home. That's really, really difficult to pull off, but it's not really easy to show and it's very hard to get excited about that. So the hero element just adds something to the game that creates a lot of passion, a lot of excitement and a focus point for the viewer. And this is something that can uh, just just completely push a crowd and like really get them exciting about things, especially if you have it occur quite frequently. Not too often, but you want to have it happen every now and then. Just like you see so uh, goals being scored in soccer, aka football. You see that and uh, the crowd is just leaving, they are feeding off these moments. And this is kind of why I personally think that in the long run, we kind of need that to, uh, that element if we want the RTS game to be successful in esports again. There's of course nothing wrong with a game like StarCraft. I mean, believe me, I love StarCraft. But I feel that in terms to grow RTS as a whole and to really get the viewers in, this is just one of the key elements that we really need to get that big viewership so that more sponsors flock to a game that has a lot of viewers. StarCraft has a lot of beauty in itself, but it's very hard to really showcase that. And this is kind of the main point and the main argument that I wanted to make yesterday. And I feel like it drifted a little bit from, uh, uh, from that to a discussion about whether it is better to have an RTS game or a MOBA game, which is easy accessible and which is better for a crowd. So I hope that right now I made the point a little bit more clear. There are of course a lot of different aspects to the game as well. They've been discussed yesterday. And this is also something that I want to talk about a little bit. Just the major arguments against what I was saying yesterday. 
And one of them was actually that we have to consider more than only that hero element in the game, which is true, and I talked about that very briefly in my video, that for example the free-to-play aspect is something that gives MOBAs these days just a huge push, and it's of course also a reason why the viewership just differs so much. But I don't really think that this is the essential point. Even if Blizzard would decide to now make StarCraft 2 completely free, I do not think that suddenly the viewership would like rise like this. I still feel that these excitement points are something that you really need to get the casual viewers in and to present it to a big crowd that might not have the in-depth knowledge about the game, but can appreciate these highlight moments and really like feed off them and uh, then get excited about it and uh, learn even more about the game. One of the points that also like popped up quite a lot is that people were comparing everything to Brood War a little bit and were like talking about, yeah, but you can really see that Brood War didn't have heroes. It was so successful. And the thing is, this is really, really a bad argument to make. And I would really love if people would stop making it because what they kind of neglect is that Brood War itself was not successful at all outside of Korea. Brood War was the game of esports. It was like absolutely massive, but it was only in Korea, and that was the reason. Uh, the, that were, the reason for that were, was that Korea in itself is very unique in the infrastructure and also in the culture, and nowhere else was Brood War as like as important and uh, as successful as it was in uh, in Korea itself. Actually, outside of Korea, Brood War was like nothing. It was really, really small and tiny. One of the main reasons why Brood War was able to just flourish in Korea was that the culture here allowed it to. Everything in Korea is so centered around Seoul. The PC band culture that we had there was just massive. Brood War, compared to the rest of the world, could be played for kind of free because it was mostly cracked versions that were used in the PC banks. So there was a huge crowd really flocking to it. The PC band culture was there, like internet cafes were everywhere in the city. So people would just go after school and play with their work go to a piece bank and play with their friends and that created a huge interest and the companies that we had here realized that and they were like okay we can make money of this we can really put money into this sport we can create heroes we can create heroes in the terms of like stars we can create stars of the game and really create leagues and uh, make a whole culture around that and that worked very well but that is very very unique to Korea and Brood War Nowhere else did it really have that impact and that is one of the main things that people have to realize when they talk about the game. If Brood War had really had such a big international viewership, we weren't really in the situation that we are today. So this is something that people neglect a little bit when they try to bring this argument to point. Also one of the things that I was talking about a little bit yesterday was that um, I personally think that a game that um, centers around heroes, you can enjoy with less knowledge. And the argument was maybe a little bit, it wasn't really all that well made because people were arguing that they think that it's much difficult, much more difficult to really get into a mobile game. And it's kind of true. Like I feel that there are different levels of how to approach it. If you want to explain to your parents, for example, the, the basics and uh, the concept, the idea of StarCraft or an RTS game compared to a MOBA, it's much more easier to do that with an RTS because all you have to explain to them is that you harvest resources, you build structures, and with those resources and within those structures you can produce units and with these units you try to take down the opponent's base. It's pretty simple. If you want to really explain a MOBA for example, this is very very difficult to do and not something that is easily accomplished. On the other hand, from a playing perspective, it's much easier to get into a MOBA because all you need to do is like focus on like learn the heroes that you are facing and also learn the spells. Whereas in uh, and then you can center all your attention on this one hero that you are playing. Whereas in uh, an RTS, you need to like macro, and macro is really where all the skill comes then into play. It's also something where. Um, well, I wanted to say that if you look at the competitive uh, mobile scene, there are not as many heroes being picked as if you are going into a public game, for example. So there's really a difference of key heroes that you have to identify. My point yesterday was more like, if you have a basic knowledge about what's going on, you just need the basic idea and you need to uh, identify a couple of key things and then you can get much more excited about a hero-based game. Being in a MOBA or a hero-based RTS, it doesn't really matter all that much. Just compared to a game like StarCraft where you need much more in-depth knowledge. Um, the, the problem that I had yesterday was with my video was conveying really that I was talking about this and not about getting uh, the access to the game because at first if you look at a MOBA or if you look at a hero-based game in general, it's a little bit overwhelming. You have all these things flying at you, heroes, skills, items. 
But a lot of these actually don't matter to really enjoy the game. Let's say in a MOBA or even in, an, uh, in a hero-based RTS game like Warcraft, you don't always need to know what kind of items, for example, a hero has. There are a couple of key items that are really important, but at the same time you really see what's going on and you don't really need to know if, for example, a Blade Master in Warcraft 3 really had three claws of attack. You don't need to know that as a viewer and you don't need to know what they do. You see that thing just going crazy and killing everything and that's all that you need to do. Of course, what you uh, kind of want to know and what you uh, um, uh, want to realize is there's, for example, a healing potion on the hero, a town portal, those are essential things. But it's not that you have to learn everything about the game, whereas in StarCraft, you really have to kind of know it all. You have to know the abilities that the uh, individual units have because they're just so key to winning the game itself and so key to the strategy that you execute, so it's very difficult to do without. I hope that I explained it a little bit more clearly today and I really hope that I put that point across. I will probably just do a couple of videos about the entire topic in the future as well because I really think that there's a lot of to talk about, not only the hero aspect and uh, that element of really like excitement that you have in the match but also uh, just a few things that people were pointing out yesterday when they were talking about RTS, hero based RTS and MOBAs because all three of them have really a lot of like advantages and disadvantages and I feel it plays a huge role in how esports develops these days. So I'm probably going to pick that topic up again in uh, one of the future videos but for now I was just trying to really put it down to the essentials to what I really was trying to say yesterday and clarify a few points that might or not have come across as well uh, as I wanted it to yesterday. So guys I hope that you enjoyed the video that a few things are maybe a little bit clearer today and of course you can always feel free to discuss in the comments what you think about these points what you think about what I just said and if you do agree or disagree with it make sure that you subscribe to the channel for future videos and also like the video I'm gonna see you soon so have a nice day guys bye bye